what intrigued me with this Jaguars team, and like I spent a lot of time in Jacksonville towards the end of the year. I'm a big Trevor Lawrence fan. Like I think I'm driving the boat. I think that he, by the end of the year, is going to be in the same conversation, not with Mahomes, but with Joe Burrow, with Josh Allen, in that second tier of who's next. I think he's that type of player. I'm eager to see what Calvin Ridley's impact is on the other receivers because Calvin Ridley is already making a huge impact. Like talking with people down in Jacksonville, they love him. They're already talking about him as a number one receiver. And Christian he Kirk was their number one receiver over a thousand yards last season. And so what does this mean for Christian Kirk? What does this mean for Zay Jones? Zay Jones had 82 catches last year. He didn't have as many nope. yards as Christian Kirk, but that's 84 and 82 catches for those two guys. How much of that does Calvin Ridley eat up? Who is that second wide receiver that you probably can get value with from a fantasy perspective uh, is a big question there. I don't know where Christian Kirk is going in drafts, uh, but if he if he's if his value is depressed, he's a guy that I would jump on because him and, and Trevor had great chemistry last year. Uh, you know, you kind of forget, you know, because of the Calvin Ridley signing, but they gave him a lot of money to essentially be their number one. They overpaid him in a lot of people's mind, but then he had a great season. And so if Christian Kirk is going somewhere in the, the middle to late rounds, then I'd certainly take a splash on him because I think Trevor threw for 4,100 yards last year. Uh, maybe I'm too high here. I think he could throw for 5,000 yards this year. Mm -hmm. wow. And I think there, I, I think that there's going to be more than enough bites in the apple for a guy like Christian Kirk, for a guy like Zay Jones and Evan Ingram to all get theirs within this offense along with Calvin Ridley. So I, I think there's going to be – last year I think they set some records with three or four receivers with like yep. six or 700 yards each. Yep. I could see all four of those guys I mentioned being 800-plus yard receivers um, within well, this offense. Well, you're talking about Calvin Ridley. Go routes, posts, digs, curls, comebacks, slants, flats, and screens. 90, 80 – very the lowest percentage in all his successful routes press or man coverage bro the lowest 71 percent a 75 percent in well actually 80.5 percent in zone coverage against press coverage 75 percent think about just think about that you're talking about there's a 75 percent chance my wide receiver is winning the route versus press coverage. That's speed. Yeah. And speed and technique, you combine all those together, and that's a lot of doubt that you put in a corner. When you can do that, all of a sudden, he now leverages the defense so bad because they have to decide. That's when, you t that's when they say, get on your horse. Mm -hmm. Get back. to Pick your poison. Do you want to lose pressed up or will you, do you want to do the thoughts and prayers by getting a cushion? And hopefully you could scheme it up and run some guys underneath a linebacker or a, and a safety over the top and, and, and let the corner kind of finesse and hold them and be handsy to be able to slow them down. And that's where Christian Kurt, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, that's where these guys come alive. And that's where they're getting, well, I think get a little bit closer to a thousand yards because of when he clears it out or if the defense starts to bail, all of a sudden these guys are coming across the middle. That's what they call a Dover, a yeah. deep over. Yeah. And all of a sudden you got this Dover clearing through. If he's not there, touchdown to check down. But instead of the normal check down being five yards or seven yards, your check down is to a very efficient Christian Kirk. That's, 15 to 22 yards in the middle of the field, kind of like the other team in Florida. Your The team that you know the most of, and I'm excited to talk about this, one, is the Miami Dolphins. Well, <laughs> I was doing some research on these guys, and let me tell you what the Miami Dolphins are right now. The Miami Dolphins have simulated. They have pieced together a – Mamma Jamma track team. I'm talking about the pin relays, the mount sack relays. Go ahead, Coley. Go ahead, Coley. Talk to me. Coley over there, he, he's 
he, he's ah, let's go, Coley. No, you transitioned too quick. I had a Ridley question. Um, okay, go ahead with a Ridley question. We can edit it. Okay, <laughs> I'm still on this. Hey, I'm oh, good for this. I this pre chord got me good for about another two hours. Let's well, go. It hurts because it was a really smooth transition, so I feel like I'm killing it. But uh, I find it very interesting the way where the community is talking about two guys who didn't play at all last year in very different ways. One's Calvin Ridley, the other's Odell Beckham. Uh, and we've seen Odell play more recently than Calvin Ridley, but yet there's this notion that Ridley is just going to step in and be fine. But Odell, I get he's like a year or two older, but it's like, is he going to be the same guy? What, Steve, do you think about taking a year off for Two different reasons, but also, and Cam, how has he looked in person? Does his speed look the same as the last time we saw him in early in 21? Before Cam answers, let me let me say this. It is two different versions because OBJ had two knee injuries mm-hmm. that made him take this unwanted vacation. That is a different That's a difference. Whenever you have surgery, you lose a percentage of mobility. Even if it's a small percentage, you lose a percentage of mobility. And you've had two knee surgeries on the same knee. And you have age. His version of Odell's standard of taking a step back, other wide receivers will donate body parts to get that kind of Right of workload. So it's not going to be dramatic, but it's not going to be on the precipice of what they were saying OBJ had the potential to be is he was on pace to surpass Jerry Rice. For sure. Right. But so Ridley, that, Ridley's the, 21 got cut short because of injury. It's not like he true, also has true. been completely healthy this Correct. whole time. Yes. Yes. He had a foot injury, surgery that. Yes. But, injury, but I'll say but this. Allowed, go ahead. Go ahead, Cam. Yeah, no, I'll say this because that's a great point. Ridley's coming off the 2021 season where he had the foot injury, but he, that's when he put up the 13, 1400 yard season playing half of that year with the broken foot. And so I'll tell you this, they have been taking care of him in Jacksonville this all season. He's coming back. He hasn't been like full speed. Let's do everything that everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if that's, I don't know to take anything out of that other than they're trying to ease him back into play after not being out in the field for a year and a half. So I can't tell you, hey, I've seen him look like old Calvin Ridley because we haven't seen that version in the offseason. But I will be there in training camp, and I will report back what (laughs) Calvin Ridley looks like in training camp. Uh, But I'll tell you what, like I, I think that talking about Calvin Ridley, and Steve mentioned it briefly before, this Jacksonville offense, the only thing they were missing from a weapon perspective last year was a deep threat. A guy who could take off the top to really open up defenses. And and Calvin Ridley, I got excited when you were talking about Calvin Ridley in that respect because that is the most – like even if he doesn't end up being the 1,500-yard receiver he wants, I think he's going to do so much for the offense because of the threat he has when he's on the field and how much – like Trevor's got a cannon. Trevor's going to be able to open that thing up in ways he has not been able to open up. Throwing at Zay Jones deep is a lot different than throwing to Calvin Ridley deep, and that's the element of this Jaguars sure. offense I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to see. Well, you talk about Calvin Ridley's speed. It's like when Dad's in a room and he doesn't say anything. He just got his arm folded. <laughs> he, he's just standing there. You don't, he don't have to say nothing. But you know you know, Papa Speed is not playing. He ain't, he ain't out here to look good. This boy is out here to run some routes and his ability to run routes and what he sustained in that off time. Question marks about his character. Question marks about can he make good decisions? What I'm encouraged and what I love to see is when you see a young guy fall on a self-inflicted wound and come back, keep their mouth closed, which I didn't do, and just go out there, he's slightly bigger. When a wide receiver gets bigger slowly, that means that they're getting their – he's learning how to be a professional, right? And the reason I say all of that, I I had some football cars. My little boy is in a a sports cars now. And he had like three or four of my cards. And I started looking at just the difference in myself or the transformation over – in the cards and like my first two years 
towards my fifth year and my sixth year, my body started to shape differently. Like my little tattoos was like, oh, it's a, <laughs> look, that's a birthmark. And then all of a sudden it just looks different. So it, it shows a little bit. He does look a little bit bigger. Like when you see Calvin Ridley and he's sweating and his arms are a little bit bigger, you're like, oh, that. You got you got to measure. You could run up on Calvin right now. You got to measure like, oh, he might pop up. He might get you back. So beating a guy like that in press, where he's already successful with his speed, his superpower is speed. He's had some off time to self evaluate. Now all of a sudden, his superpower becomes his mind, and now he knows his, he can use his speed. He becomes a more well rounded wide receiver that becomes extremely dangerous very quickly. <laughs> 